Have you ever wanted to cosplay a character? Maybe from one of those classic 90s or early 2000s anime? You know, really tap into the old nostalgia. Until you thought about the wig? How on earth are you supposed to cosplay some of these characters with these hair designs? Some of the biggest, spikiest, multicolored monstrosities are in anime. But you shouldn't let that stop you from cosplaying your faves. My friends and I wanted to cosplay as a group to Anime Expo this year, and my pal Sakari suggested her favorite old school anime from 1995, Slayers. And it was going to be my job to style four wigs for all of us, Lena, Gauri, Zelos, and Naga. This video will show you how I turned these impossible 2D nightmare designs into wearable 90s style cosplay wigs. Let's take a look at our starter wigs. We've got a Kimberly Classic in the color Nightshade for Zelos, and this is from Art of Wigs. A Venus Classic, also in the color Nightshade for Naga the Serpent, also from Art of Wigs. A Delilah Classic in the shade Fairy Blonde for the character Gowrie and also from Art of Wigs. And finally, we have the Persephone in the shade Autumn Orange for Lena Inverse from Epic Cosplay Wigs. Uh, cause for some reason Arda didn't have a single orange wig in stock. <laughs> the first step for big ass anime hairstyles is crimping. I know I just gotta get to it, but uh, I know my wrist is gonna hurt so bad after this. All right, why don't we just start with Miss Lena here and I will show you how I crimp my wig. Let's start with the tools of wig prepping. We've got a crimping iron, a comb, alligator clips, hair ties, a wig head, I prefer the campus ones, but they are pricier, and a wig stand. I love this thing. I used to have these table mounted wig stands, but I hate them and they suck. That is an objective fact, not an opinion. <laughs> here we have this nice silky Lena wig all smooth and shiny and awful. We don't want that. We want her to be thick and textured. Cause if we're gonna be making big anime hair, we need to be able to style it. This bad boy is a crimper. It's basically like a flat iron, but as you can see, it has like a wavy plate in there. And then when you heat it up on your wig, it makes your wig more textured. And it is way easier to style big, thick, spiky shapes into a crimped wig than it is a nice shiny silky wig. This technique has gotten super popular lately, but also an equal number of people really don't like it because it leaves crimp marks in the wig. So I'm gonna show you the technique that I use. Cause when I did first start using this bad boy, I did absolutely have um, <laughs> distracting, not so cute crimp marks in my wigs. It's time to fuck up this wig. All right, why don't you come a little closer so I can show you. Here I have the bottom layers of my wefts parted and ready to be crimped. Now the instinct with crimping is to grab your hair and kind of go just like this, parallel to the wefts, right? But I think going this parallel and going weft by weft all the way down is what makes those crimp marks show up a lot more prominently in the final styled product. And I wanna to try to negate some of those marks. So what I'm going to do instead, try to grab a chunk vertically. So instead of just going across the wefts this way, I'm grabbing a couple layers of wefts in here and you can see there's a layer here, there's another one in there, and then there's this final layer down there. And I'm actually gonna be holding my crimping iron vertically, press it down, and you have a little crimped section. So my theory is that when you crimp this vertically, right, you see these marks all lining up nicely, but then when you let this weft go, these won't line up as much, especially with the upper layers, and it'll sort of all blend together and you won't see it as much. But that's not it, right? We've got more techniques to make this strand ready to style. You can already see a huge difference in the wig hair that we started with and this crimped textured chunk. Did you really think that was it? <laughs> I think she deserves a little bit of teasing. And what that basically is, is backcombing all these fibers to get them all tangled. And it's just adding even more texture and theoretically also counteracting some of those crimp marks. So I'm gonna tease this whole strand, brush it out, tease it again, brush it out again, and then we still have a couple more steps after that. <laughs> tease, tease, tease. 
Trust the process, okay? Calm, calm, calm. Again, look at the huge difference in our crimped and teased section versus the original wig. So fluffy. <laughs> I'm gonna go back in with my crimping iron and I'm gonna straighten her again. I know that sounds counterproductive to all of the teasing and crimping work we just did, but you know, trust the process. Now here is the unstyled versus the styled chunk of hair. Did lose a ton of volume after straightening it, but it is still significantly fluffier, less shiny, and less tangle prone than this chunk. It might not seem like it's worth the effort right now because, you know, it's just this one trunk and that took a really long time and I still have to do all of that hair. But when you see the whole wig, slightly fluffier, slightly less tangle prone, much easier to style, then you might be like, you know, all right. And I have four of these wigs to do, so. I've got a lot of labor in front of me, but I think the end result will be worth it. This is truly a very time consuming process, and it doesn't even include the actual wig styling part. This is just the preparation stage. And past me was correct about all the wrist pain I would be experiencing during all this crimping. But I think the fluffy texture I ended up with was truly worth the pain. Look at that volume! And how easily I can run my fingers through the wig without it tangling. Ugh, amazing. Lena is just the beginning, however. We've got three more wigs to crimp, and tease, and prep. So let's move on to Naga. What was I watching here that I keep smiling at? See that? I keep looking off screen and giggling to myself. Oh, it's Critical Role campaign one. Okay, that makes sense. <laughs> two wigs down, two more to go. And of course I left the longest wig to last, as if my wrists weren't hurting enough already. <sighs> and now we are finally ready for styling. I have somehow managed to crimp all four of these wigs. And now my hands hurt very badly. The muscles are all tense and in pain. And I burned myself a bunch. That was cool. <laughs> Normally this is the part where I'd say, I'm gonna get right into styling Gowrie's wig here. But in actuality, I'm having dental surgery tomorrow. So I'm gonna use that. I'm gonna use that as an excuse to take a break. <laughs> I'll just see you again when I feel better. One week later. Uh, this week I learned that getting a bunch of screws drilled into your skull will fuck you up a lot more than you think it will. <laughs> Today is the first day that I've actually been able to like stand up and walk around and not be in like excruciating pain or severely nauseous. A dental surgery is no joke. Uh, but now I am getting back to it. Finally, I can get some progress done on this Gowrie wig. So the next steps to move forward are to trim this wig, to give him some bangs, and then he's going to get like a funky shaped attachment right here on top of his head. I will show you some of my basic styling tools and then some of the weirder ones that you need for extreme styles like this. Here's the obvious stuff that you're gonna need for some anime wig styling. Of course, scissors, regular ones just for cutting. And then these are thinning shears. This has got to be glued hairspray. There's a reason that all the cosplayers love this stuff and it's because it works great on fake synthetic hair. Other hairsprays are made for actual natural fibers that grow out of your 
real head, and this one works great on plastic head. This is another glue called Uhu and is awesome for super structured pieces and also for making wefts. This is a silicone spatula and maybe one of my favorite cosplay tools that I've ever gotten. And it works great to smooth out all sorts of glue, contact cement, Uhu glue, hot glue, you name it. And it helps keep your workspace nice and clean. This for sectioning hair out of the way, clips for sectioning hair out of the way, and of course, a comb for brushing out all your mistakes. And last but not least, a steamer. Or you wanna know about the weird styling stuff, so let me get that. All right, to make funky shapes that go on top of wigs, I'm going to be using some clear packing tape, a bendy aluminum wire, and quilt batting. If you're confused, yeah, I get it. <laughs> because this is in fact my first time using this method. So let's learn how to do this together. I had my spouse try on the wig to know where to trim the length and mark that spot with a hair tie. When trimming a wig, you don't typically want to just cut straight across. This makes a blunt edge, but what we want for this style is a nice, soft, feathered edge. So instead of cutting straight across, I move the scissors in an up and down motion across the strand while gently opening and closing the blades. You can see a huge difference in the cut with this method. All of the cut hair is going to be turned into the wefts that I'll be using to make that structured bang shape that I keep talking about. It still doesn't look exactly how I'd like, so after cutting the wig shorter, I go back in with the scissors and my thinning shears to make the end of Gowrie's wig even more soft and feathered. I mentioned that the spatula is one of my favorite cosplay tools, but so is my little hand vacuum. I love you, little hand vacuum. Of course, all of those long wig strands didn't just get thrown away. I was turning them into wefts as I was cutting. A silicone mat comes in really useful here since the glue that I use for this step will peel right off when dried, which is the same reason I use a silicone spatula. I'm going to lie one edge of this wig hair against the silicone mat and glob on a healthy dose of the Uhu glue, then take the silicone spatula and spread it out, trying to coat as much of the wig fiber as possible. Then carefully peel it off the mat, turn it over, and do the same thing to the other side. Here are all my wefts. I am now going to simply wait for them to dry before I move on to styling the rest of Gowrie's wig. And if you're asking, how do I know how many wefts I need? Um, I don't. <laughs> I'm just making a ton and hope it's enough. And here we have our weft. And you can even brush all the way through it without losing a bunch of your wig fibers. This is the top section looking a little messy, but all you gotta do, cut off the excess messy glue bits and now you have a nice clean weft. All of these wefts are gonna get attached to that wire and tape structure later, but before that, I actually wanna finish styling the bangs. But I'm gonna do that after dinner. <laughs> it's bangs time! It can be difficult to translate a 2D design into 3D bangs, so my secret styling hack is to use an anime figure as your reference instead of the character art, because someone's already done the 2D to 3D translation for you. The little plastic hair ties come in useful when sectioning out each bang chunk, so I know exactly how much hair goes into each spike and have the same number of spikes as my reference. With all these strands already crimped and teased and fluffed up, it's now super easy to style these into pointy spikes. This is a technique that just takes practice over time, so I've slowly gotten better after styling a bunch of wigs. I determine the length of the spikes with these hair ties while trying it on on my own head then just begin to shape them with my hands. One key thing to remember is to thin out the very ends of a spike so it comes together into a nice point instead of a thick chunk. Hot steam is also the key to keeping these spikes in shape, along with trusty got to be glued hairspray. You need heat to style any extreme wig like this, but heat guns or hair dryers can melt your wig fibers and that's something that you cannot fix, but steam won't melt your wig. An extra step I take to make sure my spiky points stay spiky is to add either Uhu glue or tacky glue onto the tips with my fingers. This entire wig styling process is pretty messy. My fingers are constantly getting too much sticky spray or glue on them, and I make frequent trips to the sink.
so the bangs have been styled. But I think you'll notice that the silhouette still doesn't quite match my reference. And that is where all that tape and wire and quilt batting and my extra wefts come into play. Because what I'm doing next is building a structure out of all of those materials. And those will get glued right down to the crown of the wig. And all my extra wefts will get glued on top of that structure. So it'll be nice and sturdy and solid and have plenty of hair to make the shape. I still only kind of know what I'm doing for wig styling. So uh, let's see if this works out. I'm starting this additional structure with a paper mock-up, making sure it fits over the wig and is the right size. I follow this pattern as closely as I can while bending the aluminum wire into shape. It can be pretty difficult to bend the points, so I use some jewelry making tools to help me compress the wire. The two ahoge shapes on top were made with separate pieces of wire and then hot glued onto the bigger piece. Is it ahoge? Hegao? No, it's a hoge. Hegao is the, the other thing. <laughs> But this is just a hollow shape. I can't glue any quilt batting or wig fibers onto this. So I'm covering the whole thing in packing tape. I covered the whole piece front and back, then cut off the excess on the outside of the wire shape. Might look strange, but we are going to trust the process and add even more to take the shape from being 2D to 3D with the quilt batting. This gets hot glued right on after tracing out the shape, and now he's ready for those wig wefts. It was difficult to know where to start gluing these on, but I figured it would make logical sense for the direction of the fibers to originate in the crown of the head, so the center of this shape. The stiff glued end of the wefts are attached to the wire structure with hot glue, and then the rest is slowly styled into shape with more uhu glue, steam, a little bit of the heat gun, and lots of patience. I worked my way around this shape, section by section, until the entire piece was covered in wig hair. looking good so far, but I'm not ready to attach him to the main wig yet. I think Gowrie's bangs need even more, but I don't need to make an entire wire piece this time, so I'm just gonna glue on layers of the quilt batting and cover those in more wefts. They get smoothed into the rest of the wig hair with more uhu glue. Then it's finally time to attach the wire structure and bring Gowrie's design to life! I don't know how a wig can look so goofy and yet so perfect at the same time. I do not envy my spouse who will only be able to see out of one eye while wearing this thing, but he is stiff and sturdy and complete! All right, so Gowrie's done, and I'm gonna move right along to working on Lena, because it's all pretty much the exact same techniques in a different color. There are some things I would like to do a little better for the next wig, which is mostly to integrate my separate structure into the main wig a little better, because it really does just kind of look like it's glued on, which it is. <laughs> but I've got some ideas on how I can meld those two pieces together a little more cohesively. All right, so let's put Gowry on the shelf and get to work on the main character. I think you know the drill. Let's make some bangs. These are also getting some additional quilt batting glued into them, just like Gowrie, except this time I'm adding it right away. I figured might as well go big or go home. Even though uh, I live here, 
I, I'm already home. Uh, never mind. All of Gowrie's extra wefts came from trimming the wig to be shorter, but I didn't have to trim the Lena wig like I did Gowrie. So all the extra wefts I made were cut from the very underside of the wig. She's missing a couple rows of wefts, but all of that crimping and teasing makes up for the lost volume. With the bangs styled, I make a very similar wire structure to Gowrie, along with those extra ahoge shapes. The main difference is that I did not attach the ahoge shapes to the big mustache-shaped structure. For real, it's shaped like a mustache. <laughs> and instead I glue them on separately, behind the structure, and I like the extra depth that this adds to her bangs. I did a great job on Gowrie, but look just how awesome Lena's wig looks! Ah! I really outdone myself with this one. My friend Sakari, who suggested this group for Anime Expo, will be the one to cosplay Lena, and I am so happy that she's pleased with this wig. Gowrie and Lena sure were a lot of work, but my next wig, Zelos, should be a lot easier. Cause instead of a bunch of spikes, it's just this nice little bob. My only job here is to trim up all of these loose little hairs so it's nice and flat across the bottom and flat across the bangs. I should be able to do that really quick, but I'm also going to be trying something new with this in that instead of using scissors, I'm gonna be using dog clippers. <laughs> I did make sure to balance this properly on the wig head so that when my friend Jake puts it on, the bangs don't come out <laughs> like that. Um, and I also steamed the wig to make sure all of these fibers are laying nice and flat. Every time me and the friends talk about the Slayer's wig, Jake goes, I'm jealous of your haircut. <laughs> We're not jealous of your haircut yet, Zelos. Your bob isn't bobbing enough for me. Let's see how this dog hair trimmer holds up for making a nice, clean, and sharp bang. Yeah, okay, that looks really good. <laughs> Way better than what I could accomplish with scissors. Oh right, yeah, <laughs> that was easy. <laughs> this wig took um maybe 20 minutes. Not bad. I'm jealous of your haircut. <laughs> Zello sure was easy, but now I'm back to some 90s anime character design ass bullshit. <laughs> Last but not least. Naga, the character that I am cosplaying. Naga is going to be pretty similar to Gauri and Lena, except for the fact where you can actually see her hairline. Whereas Lena and Gauri had bangs that covered everything, her hair goes up, which means I will be creating a false hairline under here. Once again, cutting some wefts out, sectioning pieces off, making little quilt batting structures, and just sort of hoping for the best. <laughs> I think the first step for Naga is actually going to be to cut this hair off right at the front 
um, just to give myself some room to glue in that structure for her super tall bangs. Okay, last one, last one, last one, last one, last one. Yes, you heard that right. I am chopping off all of Naga's bangs. Well, actually not all of them. I am leaving the very top row of wefts to hide the glue when I eventually attach her big goofy bang structure back onto the wig. This looks insane right now, but again, trust the process. Just like Lena, Naga's extra wefts were cut from the underside of her wig. Okay, stopping my weft making here for now, cause I'm running out of my uhu glue. And I don't know if you can tell, <laughs> um, this tube is like kind of made out of metal. And as I've been squishing it, it's been getting holes and leaking everywhere. I tried to patch it with tape. That was dumb. <laughs> so I have been losing a lot more glue than I anticipated. And I knew from the beginning that I'm making four wigs with this stuff. So I probably should have just bought more than one bottle of it. But you know, <laughs> live and learn. More of this stuff is arriving tomorrow. But for now, I'm going to pause on the weft making and focus on making that bangs structure instead. This shape is going to be a lot sillier than either Lena or Gowrie's. Since this shape goes up from her hairline and then back down again, I need to make a shape that's folded. Of course, I start with a paper mock-up and just start taping pieces together until I get a shape I like. Then it's more wire, more packing tape, and now you can see how this weird pattern turns into a curved 90s anime bang shape. She needs her quilt batting for extra volume, and she also gets painted purple. Naga's hair is much darker than Gowri's or Lena's, so I want to help the quilt batting blend into the shade of the wig instead of having white show through. The difference in gluing on these wefts is that I made sure to leave extra wig hair to form her hairline. Having a blunt cut edge from glued wefts won't look natural at all, so that's why these pieces have a softer edge. They also get glued so that the soft edge is hanging over further than the actual wire structure where it will be resting on my forehead and hiding the edge of the wig cap. Time to get back into gluing and shaping and styling these wefts piece by piece until all of Naga's funky shapes are covered. of the wig pieces for Naga are done, but I am kind of bummed that I accidentally left some little marks in here for my claw clips. Those might just come out with time. Uh, I don't know. That's probably me being delusional. But you know what? They're done. <laughs> That's fine. If you're going to be making these, don't leave your claw clips in while heating up glue or spray because those indents will show up. Now that the bangs are attached to the wig, you can see why leaving a couple rows of bang hair was important. These are covering up the back of the bangs and blending the wig head in with the structure I made. Every time I test how sturdy these ahoge shapes are, I want to go do ya 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 ya. I don't like it. <laughs> I I mean, I'm annoyed because it looks accurate to the character, 
right? It looks exactly like her hair, but it looks dumb on me. <sighs> I don't have any peripheral vision. I don't know, maybe she just doesn't suit me specifically. That can happen. You can style a wig that looks great on the mannequin, then you put it on. And it doesn't look great on you. I might not like it right now, but I have a feeling that once all of my friends get together and my partner and we all put on our wigs and our costumes, I'll feel a lot differently because we'll all look like goofy 90s anime characters and not just some lady wearing the dumbest thing on her head that you've ever seen in your life. But with Naga's wig complete, all of the wigs are done now. And I do have some costume pieces to finish, but for the most part, my responsibilities for our Slayers cosplay group are done. And now I just get to prepare for Anime Expo. I've never been ready this early for Anime Expo before. This is a new feeling. And with that, footage of the final costumes is coming to you right now. It has now been over a month since Anime Expo, and I realized while editing this video that I didn't actually get much footage at the convention because I was too busy <laughs> having fun with my friends at our Slayers cosplays. Sakari as Lena, Jake as Zelos, my lovely spouse as Gowrie, and me as Naga. I'm really, really, really pleased with how everybody's cosplays turned out. I did help make some armor and props for everybody, but my spouse made his entire Gowrie cosplay all by himself, and I am so, so proud of him. Looking back on these wigs, I'm mostly happy with how they turned out, um, except for Naga, which is actually kind of a good thing, because I would rather be unhappy with the wig that I have to wear rather than make a wig that my friends are unhappy with. I have learned to be just a little bit more careful with those alligator whips when style. Alligator whips? Alligator whips? <laughs> I have learned to be more careful with those alligator clips when wig styling because as we see, it does leave permanent dents in the wig. And that sucks. I also think I can improve on the glued hairline for next time, but other than that, these like structured pieces with the tape and wire turned out pretty good, I think. Apologies that it has been so long since my last video. Besides making these wigs, I am also working really hard on Dame Aelin from Baldur's Gate 3, and she's about 75% done as of recording this, so that will 100% be my next video. Please stick around if you would like to see my armor building process. Subscribe, like, share, and leave a comment if there is a wig that you have been too intimidated to start styling. Okay, bye!